and we are live. So do you wonder? Do you wonder? Uh, we're going to have some conversations, uh, probably about monthly. And I love these conversations that I've been having with you, Dr. Wong, about visioning the future and the work and the travels and the experiences that we both have. So tonight, what we talked about was um, your experiences and, and mine for the past year as a online teacher. What's gonna happen to education in the future? Is education forever changed since the pandemic? Online, hybrid, in-person, face-to-face, however you wanna talk about it, remote, distance learning, they're all different terms for it. But so that's our theme for tonight is uh, visioning the, um, the issues. And we've talked about, I'm gonna share some of the comments that I've had from students and, uh, and I've been playing with chat GPT. Have you been playing with that? Have you started playing with the, AI? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's freaking. And artificial intelligence as a way for the future. Um, I was teaching with a, a software mm -hmm. called Microsoft Teams that comes out of Microsoft and some of the other software. Um, but, uh, you know, the, when you wrote your book, Higher Education in America, that was sort of predated the pandemic. And do you see a big change since uh, before and after? Yeah, uh, Tivia, I think now that I, I think about it, there was so old school back then when um, I actually published uh, physical books and um, and them in blunder and uh, uh, physical. <laughs> well, since then I mo move on to, to ebooks, which I find it much more convenient and uh, also more eco friendly, and we can reach out to a wider audience. But then, if you think about it, perhaps books by itself is might be be dated now. Now we are moving away from. from books and more towards shorter uh, articles and um, papers so um, I wonder if this is a fundamental shift that 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 uh, can't be reversed I mean back back then we I mean the the epitome of book but nowadays it appears to be uh, not that um, held in that high esteem, especially uh, highly ranked papers. So I think there's been a fundamental shift there. And um, being a bit old school, I, <laughs> I, I I still love writing and reading books. Um, and I wonder sometimes if, uh, as you said, the education environment is changing. And uh, am I changing along with it? <laughs> Help on, on, on uh, uh, like a good is it the end so, of the book? I guess I mean, it's where we can, I we still can love holding those. a book in my hands, but I realized that I can do the same kind of thing with my tablet, which is the same size as a book. Um, so who knows? Maybe it's the end of the book era. I've got a thousand books here in the charity store in, in, in Bataprang in Penang. And uh, I think people still are kind of addicted to for example, uh, getting your favorite mystery and going to lie on the beach and reading uh, for leisure, reading for fun. Mm. There's nothing <laughs> like a good book. But yeah, I mean, I threw out my books from I mean, for, for the, te I think the we, teaching we materials on te for teaching English. Mm. Are you breaking up? 
this has to can you hear me oh there's some static going on hi can you hear me it's very strange things that's one of the issues, of course, with I, online classes and with webinars and everything is the, mm. the, the connections may not be as good as we need. So if we are teaching yeah. uh, online, because, yeah, you've been breaking up a little bit. But... Gosh. I have become an advocate Am I, for online classes. Can I be hurt now? And how about, how about you? Yes, I can hear you. The advantages uh, of uh, online whereby, whereby the reach is definitely uh, further and deeper. I mean, um, it can... You can reach uh, people all over the world and uh, costs are probably less um, it, because you don't have to physically come to campus and all that. But I think as we go online, we, we lose something along the way. Um, to me, education is not just about knowledge transfer. It's about uh, getting to know people, opening up your views to new ideas and all that and i see that online education is a bit uh, friends that i met i met, met friends in in the school yeah in the canteens in in, in physical classes and when i attend yes. online classes over I, I mean after the the session is is over that's it we are disconnected and i <laughs> yeah, I, I I met you physically, right? <laughs> so I mean that's 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 a, uh, probably a good example of uh how face to face and human to human interaction can 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 lead to great things. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I I know that, um, as I say, I've spent the last year. I'm basically pretty isolated and and communicating through online connections and there is a, a heart connection or a I don't know smells and tastes and things that you get when you are face to face but I also you know if you're trying to teach a seminar class or a, a big class with a hundred students there's no time to get a personal relationship going um, you know, maybe you meet 10 of the students out of the whole thing. And and I used to have big classes thrown at me, 65 students in China. You know, I just never had a chance um, where it is possible that through presentations and through um, personal appointments one by one online, I could actually become closer to my student something's going on yeah i can i, I can see that so teaching in the classroom oh okay I... yeah um i loved this this came out today in, in on world of buzz um this student got seven A's on her SBM. And uh, she attributes that to her cat. <laughs> wow. Oh. So there's our, our cat. <laughs> that goes my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and again, she stayed home and was doing her work and the cats kept her company. And that is certainly the future of work mm -hmm. and a lot of what we've been trying to do as teachers is prepare students for their working life and uh part of that is going to mean that they're going to need to be very good with online work 
Um, so if they don't get a chance to practice that in a university setting, they're not going to have the same um, mastery. So happily, I think online classes give an option that, especially in times of disaster, we can reach out to each other. Um, I think about the folks who are hiding in basements in Ukraine as the bombs go off, um, that because they had the internet, they were able to connect and they were able to get help and, and get rescued. Um, so that connection between the local situation and the wider world is such an extraordinary thing that we have nowadays. So what do you think your students think? Yeah, I think that's a that's a very good point. Um, I think we need to have a, a good balance. Um, I can see the, the advantages of it is that makes it easy for anyone to access uh, education, to access a connection with another person, be it if you are in a basement in Ukraine, or if you are in a, in a smaller village in Malaysia. Um, it's right. So, and uh, sometimes we might um, hit long rush to online education to be so-called the, 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 the thing of the future. And um, along the way, we neglect or oversee, oversee the benefits of face-to-face uh, -face education. And um, if we don't... Um, stop to smell the roses in the sense uh, of face-to-face um, -face education, we might, we might miss, <laughs> miss the big picture. <laughs> and um, that is where I, I kind of like dread where, I mean, in a sense, where humanity is heading if huh, we, we lose our human touch. I mean, nowadays, there's so many things that can be done without connecting with another person, right? Uh, used to be the case whereby you, you buy from another person, you buy something. Nowadays, you order things online and it's, it's delivered to you anonymously. Um, nowadays, when you go and uh, check out in, in the supermarket, so you, you have... Um, uh, take a look at the comments um, for a second. This, uh, uh, Vincent what they call automatic... Yeah, Check saying out hello counters. to you. So the human intuition has, has gone down dramatically. Are you able to see the comments? And I, I, um, I YX says, can... I also like to write notes with pen. Back to the old quill pen, as my father used to say. See the the comments though and it's so what? fun i'm so it's delighted to see ron comments. wagner um uh, books are windows to the world i totally agree uh, with you perhaps uh henry is, are also is magical. Also danger. <laughs> yeah people don't know how to do handwriting anymore people don't i i had students who did not know how to use how to write in script which is interesting to me. So did you have any sense of what your mm. students feel about it? I wanted to share with you this poll that I took of uh, 209 responses. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, we created this Google form and that was September 29th, 2022. Mm. And I asked them, which do you prefer? You want online classes? Please. You want classes in which there's a class, uh, there's a teacher present um, in a classroom, or do you want the, the third option, which seems to be uh, very intriguing to people, a hybrid situation? So as you, you say, maybe we have one or two classes where we introduce ourselves, we get to know the students personally, and then we go to online. And then periodically, for example, if in a presentation class, um, they would have to get up in front of a group and talk to the group. So that's a necessity to be in a classroom. But otherwise, the students overwhelmingly mm. preferred 79.9, almost 80% of my students preferred 
online classes. Do you have a sense of how, how your students would feel? But are, are, these, are these existing students? Um, I, I guess, I mean, for those students were, who are already, I mean, um, established, then uh, they might prefer online because that can enhance their their um, their reach. But I'm very concerned for for new students. I mean, just imagine if like you're a fresh student to a oh, new this was third year students and yeah. everything's done online. Um, uh, third year students, I think it's fine. I mean, they have already established their relationships, their friendships, uh, face to face, and online is kind of like augmenting their their um their their relationships and their connection but if you are if you're new and you don't know anybody i can't imagine how how to like make fr real friends i don't know uh, to me uh online i mean i think that's that'll be pretty tough right um it's the same if you already know the person and then you enhance your to the game you don't know anybody um is that a suitable platform uh online and social media to get to the pretty old school <laughs> and <laughs> and as i said I, I still prefer the good old um getting to know people in the canteen in the cafeteria in the schoolyards over sports, over games, uh, in the dining hall, in the classrooms. Uh, those are my my fond memories of, of well, school that's, life. I mean, that was <laughs> clear on the, the, the university campus where I was teaching that the unit that the the kids were making um, personal relationships, social life in their dormitories, but that school. One, one of the many places mm -hmm. that I've, I've taught um, often have a dress code. And this meant that they didn't have to get dressed. They could all <laughs> be together. And I would get three or four students on, on one um, device because some of them only had <laughs> phones, some of them only had tablets, and some of them had laptops. So they mm -hmm. could share with each other. So access was much greater. Um, I have posted here on the on screen mm -hmm. some of the comments that went along with um, uh, a qu question, what makes an effective meeting or an effective online class and how can we improve the online experience? Um, but they, you know, they raised a lot of good points. That, what's happening at your end? Is that at your end or is that at my end? Very strange noises. <laughs> um, I think a really important thing was that uh, by um, having to use Microsoft Teams, every class was recorded. And that meant they could go back and listen to the recording. And because they're second language speakers, they needed that. They needed to be able to. And it yeah, also came yeah. with uh, transcription. So for a student who is not a first language mm -hmm. in an English class, that idea of being able to follow the words, the written words, being able to go back and listen to the lecture again. How many times when I was in college and in graduate school, I wished that I had recordings. Um, I took a lot of notes. <laughs> But if I had those recordings <laughs> to this day, I'd love to <laughs> wish I could go back and see my teachers from back in the day. And one of the yeah. students says, in my opinion, uh, I think yeah. that things. You know, what? I, I, I saw make... my essay. Go ahead. That been and previously is is written form and you you pass it up to the to the professor and then zip so then i can still see what i wrote when i was young <laughs> can you hear me 
Oh, there's a bit of aesthetics. I almost lost you there. I'm waiting to hear from you. Can you hear me? But you're, you're fading in and out. Gosh, I hope That's it's better. not my side's fault. Oh, yeah, just... Oh, boy. Am I... Can you hear me now? Like that. I mean... Yes, I can hear you. This was the, the biggest challenge we, in we trying to teach an online class on, on, on was the internet con we, connections going bad. We pass it up to the professor. <laughs> and uh, I mean, how I wish I could have back my, my old essay. <laughs> yeah, but I think that the feel of uh, you is not if it's a good line and a good connection. You are still talking to a screen, <laughs> and um, and um, <laughs> I think the the the, the human touch is still not fully there. I don't know if it's needed for a lot of subjects. Um, certainly. Can I, hmm. uh, oh, things like I was teaching digital marketing and. Um, and, and, and English practice and th things. And there's just so much now available on YouTube, on you know, all kinds of different websites and platforms that mm -hmm. if you are interested in any topic, you can just go and research it. And that's really, to me, um, but as a student said here, in my opinion, studying online has its advantages that when I study a chapter that I don't understand or I can't take notes in time, I can go back and I can look at the tutorial notes. I can look at the slideshows. I can look at through the whole video of the event. So that to me is the wave of the future. We have to know that. Um, but I think the big thing for uh, me was sure. the idea that if you're sick, but, you as know, happened during the pandemic, what, uh, to get, I'm, re happened, I'm reminded. Um, uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm reminded of, uh, of an example. I've lost you for a second there. I hope you can come back. Or a scene French RD. Can I have... Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Please go ahead. Yes, mm -hmm. I can hear you. Yeah, I mean, perhaps online is like giving wheels to someone who already knows how to walk. So with, with these wheels, we can cycle. But if someone has yet to learn how to walk, if you give the fellow wheels, it'll be a wheelchair. And without wheels, the fellow wouldn't be able to get around at all. So um, <laughs> for those who are already able to walk and run, it's great to have online. And so you're arguing for in-person. Right? We, we, we get wheels. But for those who have yet to learn how to walk and, and run, they'll be bound to a wheelchair. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Wheels. Um, I'm not totally against it. <laughs> but you have to learn how to walk. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, for me, but go ahead. quality I think is an important that. issue being an American. Equality equality that gender differences uh yeah uh, social class differences um the, the amount of money that you make which so many people identify with your personality and your uh opportunities online classes allow a much greater level of equality i i as we know, there's so much bullying in our elementary, junior, and senior high schools and in the colleges. 
uh, and and so the social issues, the the caste issues, um, the cliques, the clubs, the favoritism of a teacher to a student, um, the bullying, all of that can go away in an online class. They don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there's certainly mm -hmm. cyberbullying and that sort of thing that goes on, but normally in a lecture class that's not going to come up and it's much fairer it means that somebody in nepal um zimbabwe wherever you are in the world you can now access harvard level classes the best teachers in the world are now online and available and very often for free so these are some of the things that i think about um, if, if you can argue the other side, but uh, I I broke a tooth. I mean, I mean yes, it did. I mean, it's undeniable. It's undeniable that um, the as I said, the reach is is much wider. Um, and as you said, yeah, we can access Harvard courses online, but then is that really Harvard? <laughs> I think Harvard's. I mean, it's, it's more than just the classes, right? It's the experience of being in Boston and all that. So um, perhaps we are getting a watered-down versions of of these uh, these places. Uh, better than nothing. I mean, if you can't attend Harvard, better than nothing. But um, um, this is still the real thing. And uh, I believe a lot of the value of education is from the the network, the 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 connections that we make, not just the knowledge per se. The knowledge is easily available online, as is uh, in YouTube and all that. But the process of getting the knowledge and getting to know people who are also in the same uh, situation, uh, acquiring knowledge, I think that's where uh, a lot of the value of education lies. And um, we don't seem to get enough of that online. I mean, I've, I was, I've also taken like online classes while I'm here in Malaysia, online classes in the States in uh, Wichita <laughs> and, and it's, it's cool and great when, when you're online and you can even like uh, converse with your with your fellow classmates and all that but after it's finished that's it I, I, I don't well perhaps it's me but I don't you don't have that lifelong connection that's true keep uh, in touch with that probably still get of online can you hear me you're fading in and out so i, I you know i argue oh, that gosh. it is possible that students learning is more effective in face-to-face -face. certainly there are studies that show that whether the teacher likes you is a major factor in how well you do in a class I find for myself, uh, mm -hmm. having the time, I, creating slideshows like I've done here this evening, the preparation is much more effective. You're able to do thinking things through, uh, bringing in research, bringing in videos and uh, the images from all over the internet, where, as I said, say I threw out the English teaching books um, because they're really workbooks and maybe a student would would profit by sitting and doing a workbook but they're not getting at the real essence of learning about a language a culture a, a concept um, and to me the idea that uh, we all have access to information at any time is really much more humane. It's much more sympathetic. Um, if somebody is lying in a hospital bed, but they want to, but they're reasonably okay and they uh, enough to to be able to follow a class, then why can't they do that? Now they can. Um, I also believe that um, we need to be to increase our tolerance for difference, whether it's a gender difference or it's a skin color difference or whatever the races or races, creeds, colors, whatever they, 
the, that whole long list of differences. We need tolerance, and this allows a much greater level of, of tolerance. I believe. What is that sound? It's so eerie. I'm with, so, I'm with you. Is this on this uh, TV? We are now at about 30 minutes. Is this is online classes are online classes the most effective preparation for the world of the future? How do we measure effectiveness? Um, so I I feel that it is a highly effective and necessary alternative. Um, and I've got lots of more material. Um, but we're having trouble with this technologically, and that is one of the big issues I certainly ran into in teaching online. But we've got pandemics coming. There will be illnesses, accidents, family problems, economic issues, just the commuting problem that everybody faces with school and work, the weather so many other challenges. Online classes mean that people are safer. They can spend more time with their families. And it's a much more sympathetic or empathetic situation than the typical in-person classroom when you're locked inside of a classroom and your phone is taken away from you. That's my feeling. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I asked, I'm definitely with you on a lot of all these points. Um, there are certainly lots of good, uh, lots of benefits. And, and I be believe it's also more eco-friendly <laughs> rather than you have to physically commute. Um, so online education has a part to play. Um, first, the question is the proportion. How much of it do we go face to face? Um, perhaps it's just me, but I'm still a sucker for the good old physical field work, physical visits and all that. And that's how we ended up in Cat Beach in the first place. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I always remember that. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, I asked Chat GPT to write me the answer to this question. Um, and it came up with these these points. Online classes are uh, increasingly being seen as the future of education. And ChatGPT went into this whole thing, and I'm happy to share it with anybody who's interested. Flexibility and convenience, accessibility and inclusivity, uh, customized learning experiences, enhanced collaboration and networking, cost effectiveness. That's a lot of it to me, is it costs a lot to go to a university. Um, and and we shouldn't, you know, uh, prevent students who have the ability to absorb and use information from just because they don't have enough money to pay for it. Um, career advancement opportunities are huge and continuous, the idea of lifelong learning, that you and I, no matter how old we get, can continue our studies, can continue our curiosity about the world. That's what keeps you alive. So this is what ChatGPT told me. While online classes may not entirely replace traditional classroom-based education, they undoubtedly offer a promising future for students. The flexibility, accessibility, customized learning experiences, collaboration opportunities like this one right here, cost effectiveness and career advancement possibilities make online classes an attractive option for students seeking a modern and dynamic approach to education. Thank you, ChatGPT. <laughs> of course, have you run into this with your students? Um, where they get ChatGPT to do the assignments and then submit them as it was their work, that's a danger. 
What would you like to talk about for our next section session? In a month from now, uh, on or around the 15th of each month, I'm hoping that we'll have better internet next time. Um, I'm hoping to continue our conversations and I hope Dr. Wong that you will come back and you and I will continue to talk. I'm inspired by your books. And uh, do you have a particular one that you'd like to work on, talk about next time? Have I lost you? Well, I haven't gotten into it, but I'm hoping to read on the beaten track, Nepal. Uh, and um, sure. highlight, which is on the Penang diaspora. So I love. And these are some of the social publishing pieces that you've done. This Penang people. Uh, describing people's lives and this beautiful photo essay off the beach uh, track. And I love that my stories about cats, some of them are in this Tales oh, of Animal you Lovers, which you're giving away. And unfortunately, we're having difficulty. Ah, but next time, hopefully, things will be better. So I hope we will be talking to Dr. Wong um, in the future. One of the things that really inspires me about his work is he's um, an advocate for social enterprise and social entrepreneurship and social publishing, all of which is for a good cause. So thank you for all your good work and uh, fascinating world uh, research. Um, Dr. Wong's work with uh, CSR and corporate social responsibility is really an ins inspiration. Um, I have uh, came to Asia in 2005. I ended up becoming a an English language teacher in Inner Mongolia and earning my um, teaching certificates in teaching English as a foreign language in China. Um, I am an American woman and uh, ran East West Fusion Theater for most of my life and worked with artists and scholars from Asia and for the last 10 years, I've been working um, to develop Cat Beach Sanctuary. And now we have about 300 cats. There's many things that I love, particularly the theater and acting and directing and sharing. And that's why these um, live streams are really exciting for me, because that's a way that we can share. Um, so I'm always interested in knowing what you love and what you care about. Uh, this is my family and, and uh, my friends. I hope that people will come to visit cats at Cat Beach. Do you want to make a final comment? Um, yeah, well, thank you, Tivet, for having me at the, in the live stream shows. And, and actually, you are the inspiration for starting up uh, Cat Beach and uh, giving a home to uh, over 300 cats. Um, wish there were more people like you <laughs> here. <laughs> and um, hopefully all of us can, can <laughs> be inspired and move a little closer to, to your level of, of, of uh, work. Uh, it really is an honor to be at the same uh, stage with you. Um, and look, I look forward to our future uh, future live streams and future future talks. Fantastic. Always great to, to talk to you. Always an inspiration. You are truly uh, keep me on my toes. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to just play a little bit of our two minutes. Um, we hope that people will visit catbeachpenang.com for more information about Cat Beach Sanctuary. And here's a little video about it. 
Thank you all for listening and uh, please do be in touch. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. And go visit Cat Beach, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good night. You can reach Dr. Wong at takeon at yahoo.com or you can reach me and all of Cat Beach at Cat Beach Sanctuary at gmail.com. Go to catbeachpenang.com and uh, we also are sponsoring Cat Talks at, and uh, periodically we post more and more talks about cats. And uh, thank you all for watching tonight. Please stay in touch. <laughs>